In the headlines, an appeal by a law enforcement student for greater fairness in the justice system. The public told it must adopt hygienic practices that will decrease the chances of contracting the coronavirus, COVID-19. And Speaker of the House of Assembly, Joseph Isaac, seizes upon a rare moment in Parliament to promote camaraderie. I'm Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, a natural progression is how contestant number four is describing her participation in this year's Miss Teen Dominica pageant. 15-year-old Lightling Julian of the Orion Academy is the fourth and final contestant of the Fabulous Four vying for the title of Miss Teen Dominica 2020. I'm going off for teenage pageants because when I did Princess Show in 2015 and I emerged the winner, I always wanted to continue the pageantry. I don't really have a platform but in my performance I'm going to portray a lot of self-confidence so I think people in the crowd can relate to that and they can see how important it is to be self-confident. My motto is to be confident in myself every day and all the time and to tell myself that I can do anything and everything if I aspire to. Miss Julian, who considers herself a role model to her peers, believes it is important for youth to be confident in themselves and their endeavors. Yes, I'm a role, I think I'm a role model because I'm the captain of my class. And if someone doesn't understand something, I would come and explain to them. Or if they have an issue with the classroom or some students, I would advise. If I win Miss Teen Dominica pageant, I think I would go to every school. Uh, well, I would try to go to every school and give a speech on how to be confident in yourself and also I like the area of recycling so I think I would be go to schools and just tell them to go green and stop littering and so on. Lightling Julian is sponsored by D&E Visions. Meantime, Miss Teen Dominica 2019 is advising the participants in this year's Miss Teen Dominica pageant to remain humble after the competition. Julian Morris tells us more. Kiana Dyer, a fifth form student in the business class at the convent high school, will be crowning a new Miss Teen Dominica on Sunday. Dyer's advice to the young competitors is not to let the results of the night negatively affect how they conduct themselves in public. We have seen different queens. I know it's not of our standard, but we are very close. We have seen queens make the crown go up to their head. I have known certain teens that because they won Miss Teen, it went up into their head and they felt they were better than everybody. And to me, I never felt like that, nor did I get back that feedback. So I just feel that they should be humble. They should keep their confidence, have faith, and still just the difference, let's say, different aspects they learn, like myself, time management and patience, they could, should continue keeping that in order so they can use it on a daily basis. The Miss Teen Dominica pageant is organized by the Waitu Kubuli Dance Theatre Company and is in its 43rd year. Miss Dyer says her reign as Miss Teen Dominica 2019 was fulfilling. I had a very active reign. I was involved in a lot of different events, especially in culture, because everybody knows I'm culturally oriented, or if I'd say I'm a cultural enthusiast. I am also a part of the Africulture Student Workers, so that allowed me to sometimes having to give up my bois bois, if we, how we locally call it, my bois bois experience to sit with the crown. But my reign was full, and I did a lot of things. I even did a Baba Stirrup, where this is a two-day, it was a two-day activity where you could come to learn the basics of stilt walking. So to me, my reign was a good one, and it was also very fooling. 
Dyer's platform in 2019 was engaging the youth through cultural endeavors. She plans on continuing activities under this theme after she passes on the crown and would like the Miss Teen Dominica 2020 to engage herself in social projects as well. So we've been a performer. I did not get to fulfill all the activities I wanted to do under my reign. So I feel even after my reign and probably after CXC because, you know, right after Carnival is boom, mop, then CXC had on your chest. So I would like to fulfill the different activities I had set under my reign. Also, I'm involved in Golub CHS, which is a, a club that empowers girls of the nature aisle, you know, to know their role in society, to make them feel even girls with low self-esteem. So I feel I would more collaborate with that club of my school to help keep up my role model, personal. The four ladies competing on Sunday are Kitana Joseph of the Convent High School, Abigail Fontaine of the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, Sahara Bowers of the Dominica Grammar School, and Lightlyn Julian of Orion Academy. In other news, a call for a more fair judicial system in Dominica. This from 18-year-old Denicia Laura of the Dominica State College, who is pursuing an associate's degree in law enforcement. Laura, who is contestant number four in the Miss DSC Mass Jamboree pageant, is participating with the platform, supporting a fair judiciary system, and already plans to spread her message among her peers. Honestly, I will speak to them one-on-one. -on -one. And I will give them the facts about the judicial system and tell them how it, ne how it needs to be improved and how it is now. So they can, see the and they can see the benefits of the ways that I'm giving them and why it needs to be improved. Honestly, I believe it needs improvements. That's why I decided to use my platform, which is supporting a fair judicial system. So I believe that with that, Later on in my life, especially if I will win Miss Marshamber, which I believe I will, then I can use that and better the um, Dominica Police Force. Miss Laura is opting to become a police officer when she gets older, as opposed to a lawyer or judge. She believes police officers are very effective in ensuring a fair judiciary system. I've always been wanting to be a police officer from a very young age, so it's always my dream, so I believe that I will do it one day and I will become a police officer. So definitely encourage persons, talk to them, and also with the, maybe the, um, the police force on the whole, member, well, not the members, but the officers, so that we can better the police force and society. Denisia Laura is sponsored by Do It Center, Fine Foods Inc., and KFC. Still in Health Matters, coordinator of the Health Promotion Unit within the Ministry of Health, Mignon Roll Schillingford, has highlighted the importance of good nutrition as one of the key factors in staying free of the coronavirus. National epidemiologist Dr. Ahmed has pointed to sleep as a very important factor for a healthy immune system. Mrs. Schillingford strongly advocates for a healthy diet, which also serves to promote a strong immune system that can defend the body against viruses like COVID-19. It is important to build our immune system that we eat properly. Okay, so we eat properly. We know the, the importance and the significance of our fruits and vegetables in providing key things like our vitamin C, our probiotics that are very integral in fighting and boosting our immune system. Okay, and that is the very reason that sometimes some of us are more susceptible to different conditions like the flu than others because we have a strong immune system. So we want to empower our persons to drink a lot of fluids, you know, water, you know, prevent yourself from becoming dehydrated because dehydration causes a suppression in the immune system. We want you to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, you know, the importance of vitamin C and you know where we find our vitamin C, you know, our fruits, you know, some vegetables, oranges, peppers, you know. Um, if you are unable to find those, um, if you do not, you know you do not eat properly and you may not get the contents in food, then we advise in supplements or protein. You know they are the building blocks, okay? Your protein, 
important in fighting infections. Carnival is right around the corner, and Mrs. Schillingford says those who drink should watch their alcohol consumption as it hinders the absorption of key nutrients needed to build the immune system. And right now we are in festive time. And research suggests that drinking a lot of alcohol suppresses immune function. Okay, so it suppresses your immune function. So we do not want you, you want you to be okay, we want you to healthy, to be healthy. Um, so please limit the alcohol intake. Okay, because one of the things it does is that you may eat, but it may affect the absorption of that food. So, so you may say, I can drink my rum, I eat healthy, I take my vitamins, my minerals, and I eat goodness. But then you drink in and then we, the food is not absorbed, so it's like wasted food. If you witness signs and symptoms of the COVID-19 virus, please call the health hotline 448-2151. On to health matters, the public is being told to play its part in the fight against the coronavirus, COVID-19. The Ministry of Health is embarking on a number of projects to keep the public safe, but the public is being reminded that it has a crucial role to play in this process. From Dr. Amit, I'm talking, one of the main things I identify is that this COVID-19 virus is transmitted through droplets. That means that if someone is infected, just like the normal, the flu that we have spoken about, um, and you touch the surfaces, so they cough into their hands, they touch the doorknobs, they touch money, they touch frequently used surfaces, and you as a popular population touch it and then touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. That is how you get the virus. So we may consider hand hygiene, proper hand hygiene and washing as a simple um, activity, but it is one of the most critical responses in the prevention of diseases such as the COVID-19 virus. So from our point, we want to encourage you to wash your hands, okay? Washing your hand can save your life, okay? When do we want you to wash your hands? Before you prepare food, after you prepare food, before you eat, after you eat, when you go to the washroom, after you come from the washroom, when you're caring for anyone that is sick, it could be children. I know a lot of times we believe that children do not um, transmit or are spreaders of viruses and germs, but they are. So you clean them, you remove their, their, their diapers, their pampers, you bathe them, or an older person, you know, they're cold, whatever, you need to wash your hands. When your hands are visible dirty, you need to wash your hands. And anytime you think that you have done any activity that may require, that you think that your hand is dirty, you wash your hands. Because I will tell you something, studies have shown that the human individual touches their face over 300 times per day. Can you believe this? Yes, it's true. Okay, so if we know that through droplets that this virus can spread and you keep touching your eyes and putting your hand in your nose and touching your mouth without you knowing, this is the modus of transmission. I want to say that in terms of the skin, the skin is a protective barrier. So you will not get coronavirus through the skin. The only way you can get it if there is a break in the skin. Right, Dr. Amin? Dr. Amin also spoke of the possibility of this virus being transmitted by the oral fecal. This means mouth and feces. So if you go to the washroom, and this is something we always say, and you do not wash your hands properly, then you can cause con contamination. Schillingford says hand washing may be simple, but it must be done properly. Apart from hand hygiene, um, the other thing is in terms of respiratory etiquette. The way we cough. Okay, a lot of times we may end up coughing into our hands. But what we are promoting that you cough into a flex elbow or your sleeve. 
why do we say cough into your sleeve and not into your bosoms or your chest? Is that the front of the chest has the likelihood of being in contamination with a lot of surfaces that we would use. So right here I'm sitting at the desk and my bosom area is actually touching the desk and all of the equipment that I am using. If I cough into my elbow, the likelihood of my elbows within my elbow touching any services is very limited. So you understand that. Okay, the other thing we advise is that you cough or you sneeze into tissue. And it is a one-time use tissue, disposable, and you discard immediately. After you discard, you wash your hands. It is believed that using rags instead of single-use tissue increases contamination. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flow. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Welcome back. National epidemiologist Dr. Shaludin Ahmed says there is the potential for the new strain of the coronavirus, COVID-19, to cause a pandemic as there is no immunity against it. Dr. Ahmed was among stakeholders in the Ministry of Health who held a discussion on the COVID-19 virus on Thursday in their quest to continue educating the public. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is on a public relations drive to provide current, relevant and evidence-based information on the coronavirus outbreak. Dr. Ahmed says there are a number of other factors involving cases who have died from the coronavirus. In other words, the vi virus was not the only factor. 75% of them had a pre-existing condition. In terms of its uh, severity, we all know this coronavirus, 85% of the cases, 85% of the cases are in mild form. <clears throat> Only 15% are serious or critical form, and of them, 2% died so far. Uh, those who died, we also know that 80% um, of them um, were 60 years and over. So uh, the advanced age is actually one of the risk factors for this coronavirus. 71% of those cases, surprisingly, were male, those who died, I mean. Um, so that's a, that's a bit of epidemiology um, of those um, confirmed cases um, due to COVID-19. Um, in terms of signs and symptoms, um, as I mentioned, 85% presents mild symptoms, which include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Um, those are managed um, within um, a supportive therapy, supportive treatment, uh, mostly. Um, there were, as I mentioned, 15 percent serious who required hospitalization and clinical symptoms pretty much um, uh, similar. Fever, 98 percent. Fatigue, 70 percent. Dry cough, 59 percent. And shortness of breath. Respiratory droplets are the main mode of transmission of the virus. That means um, it has um, a broad repercussion in terms of uh, how you manage this respiratory droplet. Uh, if we do not um, uh, do preventative measures in terms of spreading this uh, disease and maintain respiratory, do not maintain respiratory etiquette, then there is a chance that we will be transmitting this disease not only <clears throat> through the respiratory, direct um, contact with the respiratory droplets, also um, through the surface areas where there's contaminated surface areas, contaminated nerves, contaminated any uh, objects um, that can pass on to others. He says the virus has also been found in stool samples, another reason for practicing good hygiene. Anyone, 
anyone sick with the COVID-19 and uses washroom and um, do not practice uh, proper hand hygiene uh, may transmit this uh, virus to others. Uh, additionally, in hospital setting, um, this virus can be aerosolized. So that means it's not only um, respiratory droplets, also it can be um, due to certain medical procedure, it can lead to aerosolize the virus and be airborne. And it is not often that the opposing sides enjoy middle ground in Parliament, but there was a glimmer of hope this week that the potential to agree or disagree amicably exists. During debate in the House, Prime Minister Skerritt and opposition leader Lennox Linton had a back and forth which was engaging and even led the Speaker to share his observations about what is possible in the House of Assembly. They were discussing the potential benefits of the Tax Amendment Act and how it could incentivize investment in a second home. What I believe that we can look at, if we are serious about it, and which I have asked to, to be looked at is the root of a rebate. But to go the root of a rebate will require very careful management and oversight because these things open up a lot, a lot of loopholes that you have to be careful with and about. You, 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 you get that? I mean, I'm hearing something different now, which, is, which I welcome. No, I'm, 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 I, I welcome it. You know? I'm hearing that you're starting with Senator. You're, hearing, you're starting with this, you'll finish with Senator John, Senator John Fay. What this is doing here now, immediately, is to give a tax break to those who have taken the risk of investing in Dominica. Because when you build a second home, that's, that's an investment you're making. So we're giving them an immediate relief. And I do not think that we should delay that relief any further. That, that, that's the view of the government. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. J just on this on this broad point of disposable income. Have any really have any really taken your foot now? Eh? <laughs> 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 Very stretching that joke. <laughs> you, you're really stretching that joke now. <laughs> you're really stretching that joke now. Yes. Mm. yes. Remember, um, I see in the back and forth, you lost maybe about five minutes. But I love, I love the camaraderie, yeah. and that is what I was talking about yeah. when the, in the opening. Yeah. I love it. To end the news, the headlines again. An appeal by a law enforcement student for greater fairness within the justice system. The public being told it must adopt hygienic practices that will decrease the chances of contracting the coronavirus, COVID-19. And the new Speaker of the House, Joseph Isaac, seizes upon a rare moment to promote camaraderie within the House. Feel free to access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel on behalf of the entire production team, I'm Andrea Louis, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.